Hi folks and welcome to another Saturday morning Samo Flange. I'm Matt and with me today is Piper. Because I couldn't get anyone. No, actually I was going to record it with a buddy of mine. Uh, he had plans last night. We couldn't do it. Um, so I was going to record it when the girls went to bed. But I was so tired because I was up with the girls last night. And then this morning, uh, in, the, in the mornings, actual Saturday mornings, uh, which is what we're doing right now, I'm in charge of taking care of both the girls. So anyway, so uh, I got one asleep, and so this one's not going to sleep ever. So she's going to be on my podcast, and it's not going to be the best podcast, probably not going to be the longest podcast, and I'm sorry, but it's just been a, well, just a busy week, I guess. Um, our play that I'm in got delayed indefinitely now, thanks to uh, coronavirus. It's funny because, you know, you know, the flu kills, you know, just as many people. I think coronavirus said was going to kill 1% more, but yet we don't panic over the flu. Anyway, um, so because of that, I had to film the, uh, record the podcast. Well, the, the show got canceled, not canceled, but delayed. And so now it's kind of put on hiatus, which kind of throws everything off, which threw my plans off. Because originally when we get there at the uh, theater, we usually wait. It usually takes an hour for everyone to get there, change, and get ready and everything. So I told my buddy, who was going to record the podcast with me, I said, we'll just get there early. We'll change. We'll be ready. And so in the hour it takes for everyone to uh, you know, get ready, we'll record a podcast. We thought that would be a perfect idea. But unfortunately, my plans changed when uh, in Louisiana here they made a little rule that temporarily for the moment you can't have a gathering of more than 250 people, which... Unfortunately, our theater seats above that, and we are selling out tickets, <laughs> which is a good thing. But at the same time, it's like, oh well, that means we can't, you know, uh, actually have. I guess it would be against state law now that we couldn't have our show. So, oh well, I'm sure it's going to happen. It's probably going to happen in April now, which is fine. You know, I, I, I don't mind as long as it's happening. Uh, after all this practice, you definitely want the show to go on. But uh, anyway, so that's what we're going to be working on. That's what they're going to be working on for the next couple of weeks. Kind of just, you know, hammering out some of the iffy parts of our show. I think so far we're doing very good. I thought the night before they made the can the announcement for the cancellation, I thought we were doing really awesome. But uh, now it just gives us some extra time to, you know, polish up some of the other scenes that weren't as awesome. That probably did need a little bit more work. I... I fully believe we would have been ready to go by next week, but oh well, it doesn't matter. That's not my call. I mean, that's the governor's call here, and, and we're sticking to it. I do think it's funny that there's a run on toilet paper. I've made several jokes about this. Um, what are people thinking? So, I mean, I mean it's, it's the regular panic, you know. It's funny, you do a fire drill, and you say, exit calmly from the building. But you know, in the actual case, you've been to a fire, people are going to panic. They're going to trample over everyone. You know, throw people underneath them and trample over them. <laughs> it's just what happens. It's just, I guess, human nature to panic. There's so much panic over this. But, you know, I, I, like I said, I don't see the panic over the flu. Um, anyway, so what we are doing today, what I am going to do today, is I'm going to give you the top five road trips um, that I've had. And uh, I... I, I I've taken tons of road trips. Always enjoy a road trip. Road trips can always be fun. Uh, there can be bad road trips, and to be honest, I couldn't think of a top five bad road trips. Only a top five good road trips for I could do. But um, so I wanted to give you the top five road trips that I had and who they were. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's see. Number five. Uh, some of these range from years ago. I mean, I've driven. A lot of my cars have been driven. Uh, Oh man, hundreds of miles, uh, 200 miles almost in some cases because of all the road trips I took, either, you know, as a young man or even uh, with the missus. The missus and I went on several long uh, road trips back in the day because we used to go to a lot of con cons and such. So here I wanted to give the uh, top five and I, it was kind of easy to come up with. I, I really thought of the five that I really enjoyed and then put them in order. I don't have any honorable mentions. Could I? Yes. If I thought more about it, there could be a couple of honorable mentions. I mean, now that I think about one right now, uh, honorable mention, uh, when I surprised my wife for our five-year anniversary, we went down to Disney World. That was a lot of fun because even though it was like 13 and a half hours, we talked about what our plans were going to be, what we're going to do, what we're excited about seeing, and honestly... It crept up on us immediately. The, the time it took to get there, all of a sudden we're in Disney World. We're like, whoa, wait, what happened? 
because just on the road there, we were just talking about this and that and this and, and breaking down every ride, every park and everything like that. So, I mean, we really went the whole nine yards talking about Disney World the entire trip down there. And it was that was a, that was a really fun trip. But it didn't make my top five, honestly, because I didn't think about it till now. But uh, my number five, I guess, was uh, years ago, uh, I was a friend of mine had had some of his friends in. And they had just come in for like the week or the weekend. I can't remember, but me and his, it was one of his old school buddies, I guess. We had become really good friends. I mean, we just hit it off well. And we were joking and laughing with each other. And um, he was getting married. And that's why he was coming down there, because he wanted to invite uh, my buddy to his wedding. He said, well, I want you to be in my wedding. And that was the whole reason he came down there. So uh, at the end of the week, he's leaving. And I was like, well, look, man, I said, I really, I, I really wasn't uh, great getting to know you, um, you know, really cool guy, yada, yada, yada. I said, look, congratulations, you and your wife, and, you know, it's happening this summer. Uh, really wish y'all the best. He was, hey, man, he said, you know what? I want you at the wedding. He said, so if you want to drive up with Dan, please go ahead. He said, I'd, I'd love to have you. He said, I'd love to have you meet my wife and everything. He said, I think you're cool and blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, really? Um, okay. <laughs> and so I got invited to a wedding. So later on, we decided to go up there and we drove all the way to Michigan. I remember the cool thing, and I, I, I don't know if I thank Dan about this later on, but he knew there was a lot of states that I hadn't visited and that I probably wouldn't visit. Now, he was wrong about a few of those states. Some of those states I've been to several times before. But we took, let's say, the, uh, the road less traveled. We went, we, he touched in different states. Like we did a, um, we're trying to go to Michigan from Louisiana. You can draw on the map where to go. But uh, Dan's trip took us through Virginia because he wanted to stop by and that's where he and his buddy were from. He wanted to stop by and see his dad and see, you know, his hometown a little bit. And so he had made this big, wide range of plans for the next two days of where we were going to visit and what we were going to do. And some of the visits were just nowhere. It was in, it was like middle of West Virginia. Why? Because he wanted to make sure that not only I drove through West Virginia, but I set foot in West Virginia to say, hey, I've been in West Virginia. I visited West Virginia. Because he didn't figure driving through West Virginia was a visit. So he just would, and it was like, I guess I can't remember where we stopped in West Virginia. It was just a no, 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 no name town or something. And but we stopped there. We sat for a while. I think we may have eaten lunch. We probably looked around a few of the things. And I didn't get it. I was like, man, this is just a, you know. I said, this is just a waste of our time. You know, I, I understand you want me to set foot in West Virginia, but no, he wanted me to spend some time in each one of these states that we passed through. And so that's what we did. We passed through um, just about every state we passed through. We made made a stop in and kind of hung around. And that was really cool, and I really enjoyed that. And uh, when we finally made up to Michigan, uh, we had a great time. But then we realized something like he had work the next day, and we'd forgotten about that, uh, or he'd forgotten about it. And so after the wedding was over, I mean, right after they it was over, I think we went to the reception for a little while. But then that's when he realized he had work. He said, "Dude, I I got to get back home." And I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, do you want to just drive all night?" And we did. And I remember we got in early the next morning we drove all night long just to get down and i remember i crashed i came in that morning and then i slept on the bed and i slept all day i mean i was i was working on third shift it seemed like that day uh doing the night shift there but that was our our michigan trip i don't know how old i was i was fresh out of college if not in college i was probably in college back then for that trip but that was a big one um, now that I'm thinking about it, <clears throat> another road trip that I took when I was 16, I believe, I think I was 16, um, was to Atlanta. This is an honorable mention, now that I'm thinking about it. Honorable mention. I got a lot of good road trips now that I think about it. I drove down to Atlanta one time because someone had offered me and my buddy, how much? $500 to move. Uh, their daughter was moving to Atlanta and they... And they couldn't hire movers because all the movers in town were booked. And so they said, look, we need anyone, someone, move our daughter. You have to move all our furniture into a big U-Haul, um, but we're going to give you 500 bucks, you know. And I was like, wow, you know, that's really good. So me and my buddy were thinking, okay, well, we'll just, you know, we can share a hotel room. Uh, we can eat a little bit on the road. And gas was going to be covered by them. So to be honest, we weren't, you know, we were still going to make out with 
probably 400 bucks just just for the weekend. I was like, well, definitely we're doing this. And so we did. Now, he was older than me, and so he was going to have to drive. I couldn't drive. I was still 16. And uh, we went, and we packed all our stuff up, which didn't take long. I was used to moving, you know, stuff, big furniture in and out, but she didn't have that much. Put in the U-Haul. We never saw her, actually. I don't know where she was, but then we drove to uh, we drove to Atlanta. And this is the funny thing about it. I can't. We must have left late. Because we didn't make it to Atlanta in time. We had to stop in a hotel. We weren't going to at first, but we were both really tired. So we stopped into a hotel. We spent some of our money, which was fine. Because I thought that's what we were going to do on the way back. But we said, hey, we'll just unload them in the morning and then turn around and go right back. So we uh, spent the night right outside Atlanta. That night, though, he got really sick. And he was puking and everything. I was like, dude, you okay? He's like, no, man, I'm not good. I was like, oh, man. I said, well, I'll help out with a lot of the moving. I'll, you know, I'll try to lift as much heavy stuff as I can. We have a dolly. He was like, yeah, I don't even know if I can drive. I went, well, how are we going to get there then? Well, that was my first driving experience, was driving through Atlanta. Anyone who's driven through Atlanta, it's eight lanes of mayhem. And I was panicked, man. I was like, I don't know what to do. I mean, he asked me, he said, can you drive? I was like, uh, I guess, you know, like, I don't have a driver's license. He went, well, that's all right. We don't have a choice. And so, uh. I got behind the wheel, and we went out and we did this thing, man. And it was, it, I was scared to death. And for years, I wouldn't drive uh, through Atlanta. I'd drive around Atlanta because of it. Because I was like, oh, my gosh. It was, I mean, imagine anyone who's been to Atlanta. You know what I'm talking about. But imagine being a 16-year-old kid trying to drive through Atlanta. Oh, man, my nerves were shot by the end of it. By the time we reached the parking lot, I mean, I remember I was just like shaking. I was like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And my buddy goes, here, I'll park the car for you. Yeah, yeah, like I couldn't park it. Um, <laughs> but he's like, here, let me switch out. I think he wanted to switch out because he was afraid the girl was going to show up and uh, be like, you let him drive the whole way? So we switched out and went and hit the parking lot, which made no sense because all he did was just back the truck in. But um, anyway, that was a that was a good experience, but that I'm going to put that as an honorable mention. That was my first actual road trip where I actually had to drive. Now to think about it, maybe that should be in my top five. Hmm. I may make that my number five then. Michigan trip moves down to number number honorable mention, I guess. Okay, so number four. Number four, uh, we were at our, uh, you know how you go, the kids go to these summer camps for a week. My mom and dad always had summer camps for us ever since I was uh, 13, 14. We'd start going to them. I loved them. I thought they were so great. I, uh, some people are like, oh, I hate going to summer camp. I loved it. I loved it. Absolutely loved every bit of it. I loved meeting new people. Sometimes you see the same people. But it was so much fun. My favorite time of the year was always when on a trip. Well, one of these trips, my brother, uh, my little brother had come with me. Now, I got several little brothers, so this will be the um, not the one underneath me, but the right one right underneath him, uh, Bray, for anyone who knows my family. But anyway, so I'm sitting in the back seat of this van. And this uh, on the van, they have all this luggage. And what they decided to do was put sleeping bags, because you had sleeping bags, of course. They put the sleeping bags on top of the luggage. Well, when they did that, it made for a little pad where anyone could take a nap in, in the back. And, of course, you know, this is back before I guess seatbelts were really that big a deal. Um, I was still in high school, too, here. And I said, you know what? I'm going to just crawl in the back and sleep. Because I was just so tired. Because we'd stayed up goofing off the night before. We were so excited. You know, everyone... Uh, we had a few people at my house and <clears throat> probably didn't go to bed until super late. And we woke up super early, so I was super tired. So I went in the back and I slept. And man, did I sleep. I slept the entire trip from Louisiana to Virginia. I don't know how many hours that was, but it was a ton of hours. I mean, I would wake up. When people, when they when they stopped for gas, I would uh, I'd wake up talk to a few people. And then when they would start driving again, I'd say, you know what? I'm going to go back to sleep because I'm tired. I mean, I'd wake up. I'd go eat. And I'd have fun, and then I'd go back, and I'd go back to sleep. And I mean, I just slept the entire time. Um, and it was so much fun being in the back seat and sleeping. But I remember one time we were leaving the station. I'm about to go to sleep. I look, I look up out the back door, and out runs my brother, out from the gas station. And we're already pulling out of the gas station, mind you. And he is, I mean, he is trucking at full speed, trying to get to the cars. We're driving off without him. What happened is my mom, since there were so many other kids there, she had just forgot to do a head count. I mean, imagine home alone, right? So she forgot to do the head count, so she starts running out. I mean, she's, she's driving out with all these kids, but she forgot her own child. 
Well, Bray is like huffing it, man, trying to get there. But there's no way he's going to make it. because We've already pulled out. We're going down the road. We're headed toward the on-ramp. And he, I mean, he's, he's now crossed the road. He's trying to run to us. He's waving his hands wildly. But it doesn't matter. No one sees him but me. And so I yell out, Bray, Bray, Bray. And I'm like, don't forget about Bray. Now, I'm, I'm still a little groggy. I didn't say anything worse than that. I was like, Bray, Bray. And my mom said she was up in the driver's seat going, why won't Bray answer? And she turned to Bray. It's like, Bray, answer your brother. And then noticed that Bray was not there. And so she had to pull over on the on-ramp and back up a little bit because she didn't know how to get turn around. But my brother was coming running down the on-ramp. So she saw him. So she waited for him. That was funny. That was a good uh, uh, trip there. Another good, another thing happened on the same trip was uh, during one of our rest stops. Uh, this rest stop, rest area had like security there. It had you know a um, tourist uh, area, welcome center. And I remember me and my buddy were sitting there. And I said, "Why do they need security here?" And I remember he was driving around in a golf cart, and I, I, you know, I flagged him down. I said, "Hey, why do you have? Why do? Why do y'all need security? Why is You know, why are you here? What's your, your job?" I said, do people get, you know, you know, restless or, you know, they get angry at a rest area? He went, well, he said, no, nah. he said, I'm just basically here for, you know, let people know they can leave their car, go to the restroom, play in the park. You know, we'll, we'll watch the cars, you know, just in case someone wants to break into the cars. He said, well, he said, not, he said, to tell you the truth, nothing happens around here. But, you know, just peace of mind is what I'm here for. I was like, oh, OK. And then I thought about something. I said, hey, I said, would you help me play a joke on one of on my uh, team? I told him I was here with a group of people. We were going to a uh, uh, summer camp, and I said, can you arrest me and say that I was, you know, I got in a tussle with someone else in the welcome center? And he's laughing. He said, sure, man, we'll do that. But then I thought, no one's going to believe that I got into a fight because I'm kind of easygoing. I get along well with people. There's very few people I do not get along with. If I can't get along with you, uh, to be honest, there's something wrong with you, I think, um, because I can really get along with a lot of people. And uh, I'm really easygoing. Don't start fights or anything. But uh, I said, no one's going to believe this. No one is going to believe that I got in a fight. And then I turned to this one kid who was new to our group. We never had, we never met him before. Um, his mom had said, hey, can my son come? He's going to come to that summer camp too. And they let him drive with a bunch of our church kids. And so I was like, hey, no one will believe it's me, but they could believe it is you. I said, would you? And the kid didn't talk that much either because he didn't know anyone. I said, would you do this? And the kid's name was actually Jack, I remember. I actually know his last name, too, but I'm not going to give it. Because I'm, I'm actually big friends with him now. But I was like, Jack, would you do this? And Jack goes, heck yeah, I'd do this. Let's do this. I mean, he was like, yeah. You know, that was the first time I actually heard him actually talk and come out of his shell a little bit. So he decided to do it. And we drove up with uh, him. At the, the security guard put him in handcuffs and everything. We drove up there. He's in handcuffs. I'm like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, you know. Guys, 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 something happened, something happened. And the security's coming up. He's like, hey, we're going to have to take him in. Uh, he fought one of the, and he said one of the elderly ladies um, in the call, in, in our welcome center. And uh, so we're going to have to lock him up. And uh, you can come by and get him. I'll give you the number. And, and I mean, mean, the counselor's faces were like, because <gasps> the one counselor who was, he, he was, you know, he was responsible for that kid because that, he was the, that was one of the kids driving in his van. Oh, man, he was white. Why is a ghost? And I, this is where we have a conflict. We have a conflict of the stories here because Jack and I remember things differently. But I'll give you both. I think that I cracked first. I think I did. I remember just ball, I was trying not to laugh. It was so hard looking at their faces. And I'm almost positive I laughed first. But Jack swears it was the security guard who broke first. I remember the security guard laughed after me. But I don't remember him laughing first because he was doing a great job keeping it together. And I, I don't know. I don't know. But Jack, Jack told me that he thought that because when I checked with him about the story a couple of years back, he said, no, man. He said, the security guy cracked first. He said, then we all started laughing. I went, no, nah, man, I think I cracked first. I mean, I was hurting inside. I was laughing. I was wanting to laugh so hard. But either way, it was a great prank and made for a great trip up there. Now, actually... Oddly enough, one of the worst trips I ever had was, I think, the next year uh, traveling up there. Because I can't remember. It was so bad that I decided to fly. I decided to pay for my own plane ticket, I remember, and fly. Because I said, I will never drive. We had a new counselor, and he made things awful. I mean, he 
He had rules. He had a schedule. He had a schedule we had to stick by uh, when going to the restroom. Like, okay, yeah, you're going to make all these kids go to the restroom and get in and out in under 10 minutes. No. And if you didn't go to the restroom in time, you know, you lollygagged, you know, meaning when you went and got a Coke and a drink besides waiting in line for the bathrooms and you were out. And if you waited for the bathroom and you wanted something to drink or eat, too late. You should have thought about that. W why? When I was waiting in line for the bathroom? Because you get in trouble if you're not waiting in line. But if you did wait in line, then you don't get to get anything else. So it just was just awful. And he was just awful. And the whole time he'd give, he wanted to give, uh, at, at the summer camp, he wanted to give uh, daily updates on where everyone was, where everyone's doing, just see if some mind. He just wanted to hear himself talk. And I remember it was like that for like an hour. We'd sit there, you know, when everyone else was playing, having fun. He'd sit there just lecturing us about, okay, remember use the buddy system, dude. There's, it's a, it's a camp. There's nowhere else we can go. You know, we're not gonna get off campus. We can't drive. I mean, I was like, oh my gosh. I remember I turned to someone. I was like, uh, next year, even though I could drive, I was like, next year, I'm bu I'm buying a plane ticket. And everyone was laughing, but no, I did. I bought a plane ticket. I flew in. I stayed with some friends that weekend. But anyway, that was my number four. Oh, oh, oh no. I look at number three and I got these two trips mixed up. Number three was me sleeping in the back of the van. <laughs> oh, I should have looked at this. This is the thing that sucks when you're doing this on your own. When I'm with someone else, I can look back over my list to make sure I don't I don't mix things up or say, say the wrong thing. But when you're doing this by yourself, you just look at one after the next. And so I see number three was sleeping in the back of the van. So that must have been a different trip. So sleeping in the back of the van and leaving my brother was number three. And then this rest trip, rest stop uh, arrest was number four. Oh, rats. Oh, well, that's okay. All right, so my number two and my number one were super easy. Um, in fact, a lot of people have heard me talk about my number two trip all the time. Um, a couple years back, I went to Gen Con with uh, two friends, Jeremy from Super Saint Chainsaw Productions and Dylan uh, from the Twin Sons Foundation. Uh, both of these guys I had started becoming friends with, and I told them I was going to Gen Con. They both expressed interest to going to Gen Con. I was like, dude, you guys should totally come. We'd all meet up there. Let's do this. And so we're talking about that. And so I said, hey, guys, I'm not flying in. I've decided I'm just going to drive because I drove last time. It wasn't that bad. And plus, um, I, I said, you know, I, 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 don't, I didn't mind the drive. You know, there's, there's a lot of things, a lot of stops I may want to make along the road. And I don't mind, you know, I don't mind road trips. And I said, but I'll pick you guys up at the airport. Just let me know. Because they were looking at getting their plane tickets at the same time so they can meet up at the airport at the same time, arrive at the same time, Jeremy and Dylan. And I was like, well, great. Just tell me when you're going to meet up, you know, when you're going to be landing. I'll pick you up. And uh, I guess they were talking and they said, well, what if we just get plane tickets and come see you down Louisiana? I was like, why would you want to do that? And they said, well, you know, see your room where you record all your uh, videos and everything. And I was like, I guess, I guess you guys want to do that? And I'm like, yeah. So they came down like a couple of days early and uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, we... I remember they came in, we ate at my parents' house, my mom made them jambalaya. I always tell people this, if ever they come down, my mom's got to make you jambalaya, her jambalaya is the best. And um, then we played a few board games, I remember, made plans, the next day we went up, this is where the infamous cheese ball joke comes from. Every once in a while, you'll, I don't know if we do this on camera, I think this happens off camera. Uh, the missus will come in, and she'll, now I know it's off camera because the missus is there. The missus loves Dylan and Jeremy. Uh, she'll talk to Dylan for a little while and she'll always make a cheese ball joke. Sometimes, probably when I've been on YouTube on streaming, I've made cheese ball jokes to Dylan and no one gets that but me and Dylan. And what it is, is when, uh, before we left, uh, the missus had me go out to the uh, Walmart to buy a bunch of groceries for her. So I did. And one of the things I bought her was she wanted a big old bin of those cheese balls. And that was going to last her a whole week, you know. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll get a big old bin there. And then Dylan, while we're playing uh, board games, he goes, hey, man, uh, can I have some? He said, hey, is it all right if I have some of these cheese balls? I was like, sure, man, knock yourself out. Have as many as you want, because I was like only half a billion. Well, when we leave the next day, my wife's like, well, I guess I won't eat any cheese balls this week. I said, why is that? She went, it's, they're almost all gone. I said, no, they aren't. And I swear, I had this big, I mean, this is a huge jar of cheese balls. They were all gone. But I, there's like a, like a less than a quarter left. Dylan had ate all of the cheese balls, all of them. Now, I used to make fun, well, I still make fun of them over it, but the, the second uh, barrel that we bought, the big barrel of cheese balls, uh, I remember my wife and I were sitting there, and we were eating them, watching a movie or something, 
and I looked at the at the can, and it was already half empty. I was like, look at this. I was like, maybe we shouldn't be making fun of Dylan, because we probably could have eaten that whole can, that whole sitting. So cheese balls, man, they're addictive, and you don't realize how many you're eating there. Um, but uh, so, but that was the big joke with Dylan, the cheese balls. Anyway, so we drove up to Gen Con, had a great time. Uh, there's tons of stories about that. In fact, we did podcasts while we were there. But on the way back, uh, this was the part that I really enjoyed. We talked about Star Wars Expanded Universe, the books, the novels, the comic books, all that stuff. We talked about it, folks, for honestly 13 and a half hours. I remember the conversation started at 6 in the morning whenever we woke up to get ready. We were talking about something. Dylan and Jeremy and I were talking about some book or something or some you know Star Wars lore. And as we started driving, we just started expounding and going into this and then talking about that and then going to this. And it was, and you can ask any of these guys, 13 and a, I think it's 13 and a half hours down from I, whatever it was. It may have been 9, maybe been 11, I can't remember. But from Indianapolis all the way down uh, to back where I live in um, Louisiana, it was an entire conversation, nothing but expanded universe. I mean, e even at lunch, we continued the conversation. I mean, so it was a straight maybe nine, ten hour conversation about the, and it didn't even lull. There wasn't a lull. I remember thinking, you know, after a while, you'll get tired of, you know, finding topics to talk about. I'm like, oh, there's no one else to talk about. But we had so much to talk about, and it was amazing. And I remember when we drove all the way back, I made a comment. I want to say we were maybe 20 miles out from Monroe. I said, do you guys realize we have talked about the expanded universe this entire time? We're like, yeah, I know. And then we just kept talking. <laughs> I think when we when we actually got back to the house, we stopped, changed the conversation maybe, but uh, that was amazing, a, a complete, non-interrupted, uh, you know, nerd fest. I don't know if how many people would enjoy that, and I don't think anyone would put that as a number two, but it's definitely my number two, because it was just, it was so much fun. And those guys were both really nice for wanting to fly in, see me, and then drive whatever it was, 13 hours, I can't remember it was a long trip, and I was like, guys, you guys don't want to do that. Come on. They're like, yeah, yeah we'd, lo we'd love to. And they made that trip fun. Of course, so much fun, it got number two. Now, it didn't get number one because my number one will always be my number one. I just don't see another trip being as, as fun for me um, on the way down or on the way up. And it was the time I went on a cruise. I went on a cruise, and at the time, I can't remember, we, we didn't go through the Nor New Orleans port. Um, I can't remember why, but uh, we went through Ga to Galveston, Texas, and we went to that port for some reason. And so we took off, we drove down, I remember we stayed at a buddy's house, and it was super free freezing cold. It was like January or February, and I remember it was snowing at that part, the snow and ice, and we were so cold, but the, they were great hosts, they made a fire in a fireplace for us, we slept on sleeping bags out in the living room. Um, his wife cooked us fresh baked cookies. They had hot cocoa, hot coffee, you know. I mean, they were just very welcoming and very, you know, we were the ones going on a cruise. They were doing nothing but just housing us, you know, housing a bunch of hooligans. Well, when we woke up early that morning, uh, we had packed up all our stuff and gone and gotten in the car. Well, we had heated up the car. We started the car. Someone was very, very smart and started the car early so the car would be nice and warm by the time we got in it. And so we're all packed. We got in the car, and it's so warm that we forgot. We didn't. We none of us wanted to get out and thank the host, thank them for you know letting us stay. And I was like, dude, I'd want to, but I said I'm so freaking cold. It's so warm in here. I don't want to. And we all started laughing. And my buddy goes, All right, we're just gonna be rude. And we just drove off. And I mean, it was funny because that was gonna be the. Oh no, that was the. Uh, it was uh, my buddy who was getting married. This is why we're going on the cruise. It was his sister's place. And so it's it her. It was his sister and his wife, uh, his ah, his sister and her husband. Yeah, that makes a totally different story there. But anyway, uh, I remember Jake saying, it's okay, she'll get over it. That's my sister, you know. Like, oh, well, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just call later. Um, and I don't think, if you, I don't know if cell phones existed back then. I mean, I'm sure they did, but I don't know. It wasn't common to have a cell phone because we didn't have cell phones back then. None of us did. So... We just drove off, kind of left them there hanging, um, kind of rude. We knew we were rude, but we were just, and we knew it was selfish, and we kind of laughed about it. But uh, Jake said, oh, she'll get over it. It's, it's, it's my sister. She'll get over it. She understands. And we had a fun time on the cruise. That is a topic for another 
you know what? Now that I think about it, I should get one of those guys on the podcast and talk about that cruise because that was an amazing cruise with tons of stories to tell. But the uh, on the way back was the part that I just really enjoyed because as we were traveling on the way back, we laughed the entire time. The entire time. I mean, we laughed. We were laughing so hard that each of us, when we, we took turns uh, driving. Um, I had to pull over on the side of the road because I was laughing so hard I couldn't see anymore. Uh, I remember Jeff had to do it too, as did Jake. Um, all three of us had to pull over because we were laughing so hard at different stories that were being told. Um, my buddy Jeff, his dad has had an interesting childhood, and we were laughing about certain things from his childhood and then certain other things too, you know, just joking about this and that. And even we stopped in Dairy Queen, and I remember this. I remember exactly where the Dairy Queen was, too. I still know where it is today. It's in Texas. I pass by it all the time when I'm going to Dallas. And I think about it, and I laugh every time I see it. Um, when we go into that Dairy Queen, and, you know, the lady behind the counter, she is the good old Texan, blah, 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 slow country talking Texan. So my buddy Jeff's like, well, how much is it to get extra, you know, ranch dressing or whatever? And she goes, 25 cents because it's 25 cents for every you know uh, what is what is it, uh, 25 cents for every um, extra ranch or honey mustard or whatever. Well, it says that on the on the counter. But he's like, well, what if I want honey mustard? You went that that would be 25 cents, sir. He went, huh? He said, well, what if I wanted? And he named another like, what if I wanted your buffalo sauce? And he was just doing it straight face. And he went. Okay, sir, if you just wanted the buffalo sauce, that'd be 25 cents. I mean, just she, she wasn't even getting the joke. And he was going, what if I wanted two buffalo sauce packets? She went, that'd be 50 cents. And she was not getting mad either. She was just answering his question. He went, what if I want ranch? And then the other one, I want honey mustard. Can I switch them up? Yes, sir. How much would that be together? She went, 50 cents. And I was like, oh, my gosh. She is not getting it. And so I had to run out of the. I had to run out of the uh, restaurant. I was laughing so hard, and I'm falling over. I, I mean, we're just a bunch of hyenas, right? I'm I'm falling over outside. I remember in the parking lot, I'm laughing so hard. My buddy comes walking out too, and he is laughing. He went, "Dude," he said. Uh, he said. He said, "When you took off laughing, I couldn't keep a straight face anymore." I said, "Dude, you had the straightest face I ever heard. I, I didn't think you were gonna break." He went, "I wasn't until you broke." And I don't know what she was thinking. She's like, man, are these guys on drugs or something? What are, what, are they, what are they doing? And we were just cracking up and making jokes just about, I mean, on us, about everything. A lot of times on each other. We are making cracks on each other and just go falling. And then going into the, uh, we're, we're getting to the car, still making the jokes. I'm, I'm serious, laughing so hard that I remember I woke up the next morning and my sides hurt. My sides actually hurt because my, you know, I guess my diaphragm or whatever, my stomach from laughing so hard had been just, you know, constricting back and forth, and it felt like a little workout. But I was like, why? And we were wondering why our sides were hurting so bad. I said, what did we happen? And and I remember the guy, uh, Jeff's dad, I think it was, is like, well, he said, y'all said y'all were carrying on laughing all day. He said it may have been. You. I was like, no, you can't pull a muscle by laughing, or say, you know, you can't get sore over laughing. I'm almost sure, uh, certain we did, but that trip back was just just one. It was just one thing after the other. I mean, t tears coming down my eyes at times. Uh, you know, no alcohol, no drugs were involved. It was just plain out fun. It was plain out fun. It was so much fun, and that's probably why it's my number one top road trip I ever took. So there you have it, folks. There's my top five road trips. Now, hopefully. Uh, next time, I'll have my uh, new guest uh, co-host on here, and we'll be talking about more stuff. But until then, we'll see you next time on more Saturday morning Samo Flange. Ah. By myself.